Hello and welcome to today's session on Howard Gardner's Multiple Intelligences Learning Theory. In the 1980s, Gardner began to see intelligence as a blend of multiple abilities rather than one single modality. His theory of multiple intelligence has challenged the idea that intelligence was measured by single IQ measurement. In fact, he suggested that multiple intelligences represented different intellectual abilities and that these abilities typified various ways of processing information. Because he disapproved of the idea of labeling learners to specific intelligence, he claimed that his theory of multiple intelligences would empower learners by not restricting them to one modality of learning. He recognized that the one-size-fits-all approach to education would leave some students struggling and limit their potential. Hence, with this in mind, he suggested that intelligence should fulfill eight criteria with eight abilities to meet these criteria. These were 1. Musical Rhythmic This intelligence helps individuals make sense of and produce sounds. 2. Visual Spatial Refers to the ability to understand maps and other graphical data. 3. Verbal Linguistic Refers to the ability to study information and produce spoken and written language. 4. Logical Mathematical This type of intelligence enables the individual to make calculations, deal with abstract problems and formulate equations. 5. Bodily Kinesthetic this intelligence involves using one's own body to solve problems and do tactile activities. 6. Interpersonal intelligence, which reflects an individual's ability to understand other people's feelings, moods and intentions. 7. Intrapersonal intelligence, which reflects an individual's ability to understand their own moods, intentions and feelings. 8. Naturalistic, which reflects an individual's ability to live in nature due to having the ability to recognize fauna and flora in the natural world. Gardner believed that every individual had initially eight types of intelligences at varying competency levels and that learning did not necessarily have to rely on the strongest of the intelligences. Hence, an individual's preferred style guided the way they learned. An example would be the following. If someone was a skilled artist with high visual spatial intelligence, it did not necessarily mean they would not benefit from logical mathematical intelligence to help them express their art. Gardner clearly recognized that everyone had a clear mix of learning styles and they could be used differently according to varying circumstances. Today, an important question to ask ourselves is, what can the theory of multiple intelligences bring to the world of education? As educators, we should be asking ourselves if we are engaging all our learners and if we are communicating our objectives to them. And if not, what other approaches can we utilize in order to cater to everyone's educational needs? We know that we can teach in multiple ways. However, we should not make the mistake of grouping our students as specific types of learners for having a specific kind of intelligence, since labeling in this way creates limitations and can restrict our learners' potential. When we understand different teaching approaches and present content to our students in a variety of ways, it will improve how they access this information and how they can demonstrate their understanding of the topics. Therefore, when we present interesting materials in multiple ways, students are able to engage in tasks more actively and show their understanding in a way which is more accessible to them. It is vital to continuously gather data on students' performance, both strengths and challenges, and make a note of their preferences and dislikes in order to develop a repository of techniques and approaches 
to teaching content. Using a variety of resources will improve student motivation as they will explore the topic and have new learning experiences. At the same time, it will give teachers a better insight into students' strengths, needs, and possible areas of improvement. Interestingly, Gardner's theories have been met favorably by a range of educators and policymakers. Curricula, as well as classrooms, have been redesigned to reflect the understandings of multiple intelligences. In addition, although there may be some issues and unanswered questions around his notions, the theory of multiple intelligences has had a certain appeal to education and has made teachers reflect on their practice. And that brings us to the end of today's session on Gartner's theory of multiple intelligences. If you would like to explore more on any of the topics discussed, click on the links provided at the end of this unit. As always, remember to observe what is happening in your classes and be a reflective practitioner.